What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of Creatives in Quarantine. Right now, I got Ratberry, a.k.a. Raymond here. Say what's, what's up? up, guys. Yo, what's up? Yeah. So you've been you're a photographer. Mm-hmm. You do photography for um, shows like Montel Fish. And um, mm-hmm. I've seen you at a King's Kaleidoscope one. You can see the poster right there. Hey, That's yeah. The what's up? <laughs> the, Tight. We're at the same show. Mm-hmm. But um, how did you get started in photography in music specifically? Because, you know, who were you a fan of, like, that made you kind of want to do that? Yeah. Um, dang, yeah. So I, so yeah, before I got into specifically music photography, um, I really wanted to become like a fashion photographer. Um, so doing like campaigns for like different clothing companies and like different seasons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I tried to I was I was like dabbling a little bit with music um just <laughs> really because I was a fan of like certain people yeah. um and then I would hit them up I'm like yo can I shoot your concert because like in reality like I just wanted to meet them yeah, um <laughs> and you know um so that was tight and then like I just started shooting more but it wasn't like I wanted to do that full time um and then I got to to college and I dove like full force into like wanting to work in fashion and so I shot with like models in modeling agencies um just that whole field of fashion photography mm. um and I just I quickly realized that I hated it <laughs> wow okay um, I yeah. I, re- I realized that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be um you know my, my style is very different from the usual like fashion photographer um it's very bright very weird um and the fashion world is very selective when it comes to people like that um so you have like certain people like uh like Lachlan Bailey or um or Annie Leibovitz who are like big fashion photographers and they have their own style but there's only a handful of people like that within the fashion world and fashion it's very like we want you to showcase our stuff it's not about your photography mm. it's about our clothes and we yeah. want to have the cleanest like most like visible photos that you can see to showcase our stuff and i was going into it thinking that i was going to be able to be creative and to just like showcase um just like mixing art and fashion um but i just realized that wasn't the case um and so then after that my second semester in college i was like okay this semester I'm going to try full music and that's when I started shooting with like Montel um that's when I did more social club shows um and then and then like the next summer after that was the King's Kaleidoscope show um and then I just realized then I was like okay I'm working with these artists and they're allowing me to be creative like this is what I want to do mm. um just because then it was like okay and they're respecting artists and I get to do what I want but also I'm working with them um and they like trust me in that area so that's like how I really got into like the music side of photography for sure Hmm. okay yeah that's really interesting and that's that's what I thought of when um when you when you mentioned fashion I was like oh yeah they they're probably really like you know picky with it because they're trying to sell something you know what I mean Mm -hmm. but you know you're trying to sell something with your art you know what i mean Mm -hmm. well you're not even trying to sell something but you're trying to showcase these artists in you know what way you'll think it would look like the best yeah for sure yeah since we're talking about that um like your shots aren't common like i notice you use like kind of like the blurry type of images a lot like those lines squiggly lines tell me about that like where did you first like find that yeah um so yeah that te- that technique that i usually i use a lot of it's pretty much it's called shutter drag or it's using shutter drag it's slow shutter um and so i'm pretty much for a camera um there's a shutter on it and it will um open up for a certain amount of time and that lets the light in and then that's what your image is um and so however long the shutter is open for the more light comes in and the more it will track something that moves across the image um and so usually you're at like one two hundredth of a second so it's very or like one five hundredth of a second so it's very fast and so it captures it like very quick so like for sports and stuff like that um because people are moving so fast you want it to be captured right away Mm -hmm. um and so that's what people use and I use that definitely for a lot of my work, but 
for a majority or for some of my work i use a slower shutter and so that allows like the lights to be captured all weird and um so like people are it like looks blurred and distorted um and just adds that little bit of just like something different to it um so i'll shoot at like 1 20th of a second instead of like 1 500th of a second um and i really i was the way i like the first time i did it was i was in yearbook in my high school and i was shooting at a homecoming event and i was just like okay i got my regular shots it's at night there's like a lot of cool lights around what can i do to make it look different um and so i popped a flash on my camera and then started doing the slow shutter and i was like yo this is really tight and i'm having a lot of fun with this like oh. i'm gonna keep going um so then i would try it in portrait sessions and concerts um and then yeah it just keeps keeps growing i guess i keep finding new ways on how to use that technique um but yeah hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's interesting so yeah we have a similar kind of we have a, a weird history like when me and you running into each other right like yeah it's just crazy and that's how like the the christian hip-hop like community works like we just like all the fans kind of know each other like from the mm -hmm. la area and everything but yeah um you told me a story about the Andy Mineo concert that happened in 2016. Yeah. yeah. And uh, tell me about that because I heard the story, but I think people need to know because that's so sick. Yeah, it's super weird. Um, so that was, was that in 17? Was that 2017 or 16? It, co it could have been because uh, Uncomfortable came out in 2016. Yeah. And yeah, so it must have been 2017 maybe. Yeah, it was, it, I, yeah, it was 17. Um so at this point, I don't even think I was doing photography for a full year yet. Um, I was like just getting into it. You know, at this point, I was like, I don't really know if I want to shoot like people or, or like shoot um, like concerts of musicians and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but for years before this, I was a huge Andy Mineo fan, huge Lecrae, Social Club, you know, like all those guys. Um, and so I was going to the Andy Mineo show in L.A. Um, and uh, I saw that he was having the Johnny Cupcakes thing. Um, and I was like, first, I was like, okay, first, first uh, 100 people, you get a, a limited edition shirt, and then it's like a meet and greet. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is that. Like, I'm already going to the meet and greet for Andy, like, later mm -hmm. on in the day. But I was like, I might as well do it, you know? Like, I'm, I'm going with a homie. My parents are driving. Like, let's go. Um, and so then we went. And I remember waiting in that line and it was super tight. Um, yeah. I remember I have, I have one of the shirts. It doesn't fit me anymore, but I still have it. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I, I have it. It doesn't fit at all. It's like super tight, yeah, but, super but it was, tight. it's so comfortable though. Like the, the material yeah, is like good quality, yeah. good quality. Yeah. But, but keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I went to that and like that, I don't know if that was my first time meeting Andy. Um, Cause I had met him like, other shows and then i think a year before that i met him at sneaker con which was oh, super random that's dope. That's i remember he performed um because it was like half bet experience half sneaker con and he performed with lecrae and then i saw him walking around because like no one knew who he was like no one at sneaker con is gonna know yeah, who he yeah. Know is. and he was walking around and then i saw him i'm like yo you're like my favorite rapper and i'm like super i'm like when this 15 year old kid comes up what to him <laughs> super funny um i think if you scroll down far enough on my instagram you'll see a picture of that um but if you guys want to do that that's okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um but yeah so i remember i went to that and like that was super tight meeting him and then after johnny cupcakes thing to the right of him i saw mike falabi and I was like, oh, yo, yeah. that's his photographer. Like, I love his work. And at that point, he was like one of my favorite photographers. Um, and so I went up to him, like talked to him for a little bit. I was like, dude, you're such a big inspiration. Um, and then I, I, yeah, so that happened. And then like later on in at the meet and greet, um, it was super tight. I get to talk with him again. And then at that, I had, um, I brought my camera in. And I actually snuck it in because um, I definitely was not allowed to have it in. Like I brought my my Sony A7 or no A6000 in, and I remember like looking up before the concert. I was like, okay, if I can bring this in, like I'm totally going to, and I'm gonna shoot. Like this is gonna be tight. Um, 
And then I saw on the website that I wasn't allowed to bring it in, but I was like, okay, I'm going to bring it just in case. If I can bring it in, I'll just drive it to, or I'll run it over to the car. Um, and I think the security guard who was manning my station, I think it was his first day. Cause he like looked at it. He's like, I'm not sure if you're allowed to have this. No, nah, I, I think you can. I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. And then like another security guard came over and he's like, Hey, did you let this through? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's good. I think it's good even though it totally was not, oh, I was crazy. not allowed to have it. <laughs> and so, so I brought it in and then I got to shoot and that was my first concert that I ever shot. Um, and like, that was a crazy experience cause I was shooting so much. Um, and I was like, Oh my God, I had so many, I think I had like 10,000 shots that I had to sort through like later on that week. Whoa. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, that was a fun night. I even, when I brought the camera in, I had Falabi sign my camera strap because I was like, dude, you're so sick. You're so sick. Like, I want you to sign my strap. <laughs> uh, I need to find that strap. But it's funny now because, like, I'm homies with him. And it's, yeah. like, looking back on, like, how I viewed him and then, like, how I view these other artists, it's, like, crazy to see, like, how much has changed in the last, like, four years where it's, like, now I'm getting a pass to go shoot these concerts and I'm doing, like, portrait sessions with them afterwards. And it's just really, it's crazy. It's really weird. Um, but, yeah, that was my first time shooting. And then you were at that show. Yeah. But <laughs> we didn't even know each other then. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. I was, like, that was actually one of, that was my first um, Andy Mineo concert, too, I think. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was insane. And okay. real quick, was it, uh, I feel like, I feel like it was, uh, uh, we went to the same sneaker con, too. I went to that. Did we really? Con. Yeah, oh my I did. Gosh. I didn't. Wow. I didn't know Andy was there, and I didn't know Lecrae was there though. Like that, Dang. dude. The funny thing was it the celebrity basketball one, where where like they had a. I think it might have been. I think dude, it might have been. Yeah. I was. I bought. Um. I bought a pair of Grape Fives over there. It was like it was like one oh, of my bet. Great pairs, dude. And um, yeah, I, don't I think have them I, bought, <laughs> I bought. I bought Bel Air Fives that Those day. Are Fire. I think those I bought Bel Air. Yeah. Those were my first Jordans. Yeah, really? and I was so oh, hyped. Man. Yeah, those were my first, first ones. Dang. Now that we're talking about sneakers, like, I just, <laughs> dang, I want to talk about sneakers now. Yeah. Dude, like, these interviews are, like, coming out way different than I expected. This is crazy. But yeah, what is, like, right. like what, what is your opinion on sneakers? Like, what is your, like, favorite Jordan? What is, like, you know, I just want to know your whole sneaker. Oh, yeah. I, I love sneakers. Um. Back in high school, I used to be super into sneakers. So I would like, uh, I would like wait for drops and like, you know, I, I got um, back in, I actually just sold these. I had uh, Legend Blue 11s. Um, I have, I have Metallic 5s. I had the Bel Air 5s. Um, you know, I had a, like a bunch of Jordans and stuff. And then I kind of went like off and I was like, I'm just going to wear Vans for a while. Um, but now I'm like slowly getting back into them. And so I'm high key trying to find some bread ones. Cause those bread ones are like, those are like classic they go with everything. They go mm -hmm. with shorts, they go with pants, you know, skinny black jeans or like baggy cargo pants. Like they will go with anything. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to get those right now. Cause those are like the top of my list for like favorite Jordans for sure. But what what about you? What are your favorites? What are your so, go-tos? So the weird part about me is like I love all Jordans and I love all sneakers, but right. I just can't wear them. I I can't really? like like they're too bulky for me. The only Jordans uh, I wear are ones and fours. Other than that, right. I have two pairs of sevens, a pair of fives, and like some others. But I can't wear them just because every single time I just like they're too big. Like look, I'll show you my first yeah. Jordan. This here is my favorite looking Jordan and like my first Jordan I got. These are the Cigar 7s. Tight. These tie. are like, oh my gosh, I've had these for like, I want to say, what were we in 2020? <laughs> like five years, something like that? Yeah. Five years. Those are shoes you wear to like a wedding or something. Yeah. Like you got to break them out every once in a while. Definitely. And then uh, uh, Subtle Flex, but like, uh, <laughs> I got these ones. <laughs> Dang, that's hype yeah yeah i was like that came through with a birthday gift like that was that yeah was when i got those that's tight but yeah right now i'm tr I'm trying to like sell a lot of my shoes um just so i can buy like 
nicer shoes that I'll wear more often because I have like a ton of shoes that I just don't rock at all and so like I'm just I'm trying to get rid of them and then like switch up the rotation but Definitely. yeah I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm my Depop up, yeah. Depop up yeah, my Depop, guys. yeah. <laughs> yeah if you want to cop some yeah. size 8 shoes because I have <laughs> size a small eight. fit but it's small whatever boy foot. I was about to buy stuff too I was like dang he got, he got some heat on him but yeah. yeah maybe i should sell though to switch up my rotation a little bit but mm-hmm. i don't know this this whole quarantine thing it's like why am i even gonna like flex with anything you know yeah i know i'm i'm like wearing my nicest shoes to go like take out the trash <laughs> like it's so weird bro i feel oh that gosh. i yeah. also yeah uh i saw those um those converse that you wear to your shows like those like yeah type things yeah what are those ones? V- yeah so those are uh the josh vitez um converse josh vidas he's a um he's a pretty well-known artist now um but he has a lot of murals and stuff uh he has a very like unique and recognizable uh style um so if, if you look at like the sole of the shoes that i'm wearing they look almost like cartoonish um they're like outlined in black and it's like white it looks like they're straight out of a cartoon um and so this guy he if you've ever seen the shoes where like the whole shoe is like that. Like he used to do them with con- like uh, Air Force Ones um, where he takes a white Converse or not mm-hmm. Converse, uh, Air Force One and then he Sharpies like all the stitch work of the yeah, shoe. I've seen the, um, I've seen the customs. That, that they yeah, do. And so, so he's the first one to do that. And then he does that for like buildings and like skateboards and fire hydrants and like crazy stuff. Like he'll like, like outline everything um and so he's been like he's been doing like a lot of stuff in the last year and so he got that deal with converse um and when those dropped i was like bro those are so fire yeah. um yeah if you don't know, if you guys don't know what those are check them out josh beat his converse um they come with like patches so you can like just customize the heck out of them uh, which is super tight like i made all my panels like upside down and like gave them different laces uh, but it's really cool, really, really tight concept for a shoe. So yeah, definitely that was a dope shoe. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I think the same thing about the Chinatown markets, the the Converse, the UV yeah. light. Thing. Like I'm crazy about those. I still want those. Yeah, but um, yeah, those are crazy. But the problem with my sneakers is I beat them to the ground. Like I can't, really? I can't keep them nice. Like it's just impossible for me because yeah. I just love wearing them. Like I have a pair of Fear of God. Um, the um. The vans, the uh, not the like the skate low highs or the skate highs. No, nah, they were like this. I'll just get them. <laughs> <laughs> get them. But like, like check this out. I like these ones, right, with the strap and everything. Oh, but dude, tight. they are so beat up. Like they're disgusting oh, now. Yeah. And look yeah, at like those are the, the full cabs. The back are like yeah. blown out. Like Do it's just foam. Them? I didn't skate in it. Well, maybe like once or twice, like, to <laughs> yeah. be honest. but, uh, but, um, yeah, I've like, I don't know. I just beat those to the ground, but anyway, yeah. we're going to get on with the, with the lightning round of questions. First thing that comes okay. to mind, um, and then we'll wrap this up. So who do you miss most during quarantine? Oh, my homies, my homies from school for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause all of them had to move back. Um, cause we oh, all went to yeah. CBU and so a lot of them are out of town. Um, and so the fact that like all of them had to move out and then like, we're not any room, like, we're not roommates anymore. So we can't just hang out with each other like 24 seven. Um, so yeah, it's definitely the homies. Huh. I have a homie that goes to CBU. Dang. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> we'll That's that tight. After. Yeah. Heck yeah. But, um, what activity did you not expect yourself to be doing like in quarantine that you wouldn't do otherwise that you enjoy? Um, still life photography. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been really interesting. I'd have the last semester or last like quarter of school um, quarantined. And so all of my projects for school, I'm a photo major. And so all of our projects like got totally switched around. And so I had to start taking pictures. Interesting. Yep. And I've never done like any sort of still life. Like I'm only doing, I'm usually only doing portraits or concerts. And so the fact that I had to shoot like still life, it was really interesting and I've never done it before. Um, but I actually really liked it. So it was kind of tight, but yeah. Okay. Dang. Yeah. What is your go-to like quarantine meal? Because a lot of people are cooking now. I don't know oh, if you're cooking, quarantine but like, meal? you know. Oh man. Um, 
is coffee a meal? Because I be drinking sure. a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. some people get fancy with it, like like propaganda with the with the pour and everything. The That's pour, cooking. That's cooking yeah, to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I had a pour over this morning. You know, I have some right here, so you know, I had to be all routine and get that pour over every morning. So I'd say that. <laughs> this man. All right, what is the go-to album or songs you're bumping through this quarantine? Through this, um, probably I got a playlist. Uh, wait, did, you were at the one big fam, the one big family tour, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I remember seeing you in pictures when I was editing yeah. photos from that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have a playlist of like everyone who was on that tour, pretty much. Um, and so I've been rocking that playlist like nonstop, like night mm. and day. I'll just put it on shuffle, put on a speaker in my room, and then just, like, have that on. Um, that or um, After Hours by the Weekend. That Ooh, album. dude. So good. Oh, my bro. gosh. I can't stop talking about that album. Like, oh. my friend, like, to be honest, I was, like, not a Weekend fan at all. Like, before it, I was, like, Dang. whatever. But then, but then my friend showed me. I'm, like, oh, my gosh. Yo, like, this is it's crazy. fire. Hey, Did you watch real- the music videos? I did. I did. Dude, that whole switch up between like the first half of the album and the second yeah. half is like Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I think it's after like Escape from LA. But mm-hmm. but like after all that it's like that 80s inspired like oh my god. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my fire. gosh. It's I could fire. talk forever about that album, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What place do you miss going to the most? Coffee shops. Coffee yes. shops yeah Dang. yeah I, okay. I feel like a super hipster right now because two of my answers have been about coffee but <laughs> definitely coffee shops yeah 100 i can't relate i don't like coffee to be honest but yeah i mean okay like people say like oh trust me you have to get like the good coffee like first yeah i have yet to try the good coffee maybe you know she, yeah I gotta, I gotta i gotta check it out but yeah i'm not not really a coffee person anyway mm-hmm. all right last lightning round question what is the one lesson that you learned through this quarantine that you'll always remember once you get out? Um, it's okay to rest. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely something that I've learned. Um, just because, I mean, the idea of resting has been something that I've been trying to learn the last year. Um, just with like school and like working um, and like hanging out with friends, it's like really hard to find rest for myself. Um, cause I, I think with all this, we've kind of been forced to like really be able to spend time alone, um, which too much of it is really bad for you 100%. But, uh, a, I think all of us need a little bit of time alone, just like whether it's in the word reading, um, or just like listening to music or just like hanging out with like our family that we live with. Um, I think resting in that, not thinking about work is something that's really hard to do, but it's very, it's very beneficial. Um, and if we're able to rest in that, then we're able to work harder. Um, and I think that's definitely something that I've learned this, this quarantine for sure. So, mm. yeah. All the no days off people get out of here. Like, yeah. Rap yeah. Rap said it first, yeah. man. But nope. <laughs> you'll be able to work harder if you rest. Trust me. Trust me. Yes, sir. So this yeah. has been episode three of Creatives in Quarantine. Thank you, Ratberry, for joining us. Where can we find you on all Instagram, Twitter, whatever? Where can we find you? Yeah, uh, Instagram is Ratberry. Uh, so it's Raspberry minus the S. Um, website is RaymondAlva.com. Uh, simple as that. And so, yeah, that, that's pretty much the two places. I have a Twitter, but I don't really post on it. Um, I just like and retweet stuff uh that's really funny um so yeah uh, thanks for having me yeah it was super of course su- it was super tight so super fun these interviews yeah. are getting even like doper as they go on but Heck thank yeah. you guys for tuning in this has been creatives in quarantine see you guys later peace